Who was the bounty hunter who defeated Chewbacca? And how did the Wookiee survive a thermal detonator blast at point-blank range? That's what we're going to find out. This is the often untold side of the Star Wars universe. The seedy underbelly of the Outer Rim planets can get rather ugly. Amidst the double crossing, crime and nefarious characters down every alley, the smugglers and bounty hunters at odds with each other don't tend to forget one another. Just a few weeks after the destruction of the first Death Star, Han Solo's counterpart and Rebel Alliance ally Chewbacca was about to find himself at odds with a bounty hunter as dark and as brutal as the Galactic Civil War. Where there is Chewbacca, Han Solo is never far behind, uttered by a particularly terrifying looking Gungan, conducting business in some shady hovel, overwhelmingly lit by a single red spotlight. The Gungan eagerly anticipated the response of his potential partner. Looking for nothing greater than money, the criminal pondered how much this information was worth. Information like that could mean a lot to certain people in these parts, and it did. Sitting opposite the Gungan, stretched over a bar booth situated between a table littered with bottles, shot glasses, and weaponry, was Dengar. Dengar, sometimes referred to as Dengar the Demolisher, was just as ruthless a bounty hunter as his nickname implied. A former gladiator on Corellia, he became a bounty hunter during the era of the Clone Wars, in which he worked alongside other mercenaries to carry out odd jobs for the Separatists. His adventures would lead to allegiances with the Sith, mainly in the shape of Asura Ventress, a very influential figure of the Clone Wars. And now, this part cybernetic, part human, all evil warrior was gunning for Solo, but he'd have to get through Chewbacca first. Elsewhere on the smuggler moon of Nar Shadda, Chewie and C-3PO started to search for Luke Skywalker. Having been informed of his capture in the arena at the hands of Gracchus the Hutt, the Rebel Alliance duo worried about the boy's safety. On top of a bar, that they had fought their way out of in the heart of the smuggler planet's dirty and decrepit city, they contemplated how they could rescue their friend. As usual, the Wookiee was less cautious than the droid. Bowcaster already cocked, he suggested with his signature roar that the duo simply fight their way into the arena, much to the chagrin of 3PO. All of a sudden, a piercing electrical bolt was shot into the Wookiee's side, causing his whole body to be electrocuted, and he unleashed a painful roar. As Chewbacca lay spasming on the floor, Dengar introduced himself, looming above the once towering Wookiee with a blaster. Jabba sends his regards. C-3PO was sent straight into panic mode. High up on the roof in a sketchy city, this was not the usual environment for a protocol droid. Dengar's demeanor didn't change. He was only here to get to Solo. While Chewbacca still writhered in pain on the ground, the bounty hunter demanded 3PO call his smuggler friend. Putting up his usual defense of chatting away the enemy, C-3PO actually bought himself time as he discreetly tried to lean down and pull the electrical bolt out of his Wookiee friend, but it didn't get past Dengar. Just as suddenly as it happened to Chewbacca, the protocol droid was shot with a piercing electrical bolt, knocking him to the floor. The golden metallic body smashed on the ground, with every flare of electricity coursing through him reflecting off his exterior shell. Dengar's expression did finally change to one of sadness, but not due to the pain he was causing, because that last shot shorted his last bolt, a true display of how heartless the particular bounty hunter was. This moment didn't last long though. With the charges no longer searing through his veins, Chewbacca finally rose out of a cloud of smoke. Dengar, assuming he could reload in time, saw no further challenge from the Wookiee, yet there was a very clear anger in Chewie's eyes. With a roar louder than ever, he threw a punch that barely missed Dengar, and put a hole right through the brick structure they were standing in front of. Dengar taunted Chewbacca. I'm not just a pretty face, you know. I can throw a punch as well as you can- Before he had a chance to finish, Chewbacca grabbed the bounty hunter by his shoulder pads and tossed him across the roof. A now disgruntled Dengar struggled to pick himself back up, but he had enough weaponry. He wouldn't need to go blow for blow at Chewie. In one swift move, the bounty hunter whipped out a small, concealed blaster and lunged at Chewbacca, a move that was quickly thwarted by the Wookiee. As he crushed the weapon in Dengar's hand just as quickly as it was presented, the Wookiee grabbed Dengar by his neck and lifted him into the air. Now in a deathly chokehold, Dengar's quippy nature started to run thin. As Chewie tightened his grip, Dengar gasped for air, spewing spit as he struggled for a single breath. He was raised further and further from the ground. But the bounty hunter had one more trick up his sleeve. Slowly, 
Dengar raised the thermal detonator behind the Wookiee's back, and as it exploded, he wriggled free. Chewie was thrown to the ground in agony. Now surrounded by flames and a breeze on the blistery roof, Dengar was back on his front foot and Chewbacca was helplessly knocked down. As the bounty hunter mercilessly kicked Chewie, he pulled out another small weapon, a plasma knife. The Wookiee howled in pain, and the bounty hunter plunged the blade into his abdomen. Unable to help, C-3PO laid on the floor, electricity jumping around his body from the bolt Dengar had fired earlier. With the Wookiee down, Dengar started to taunt him and his race of proud Wookiee warriors. Just as he was about to raise his hand to deliver a crushing blow from a small electrocution rod, Chewie finally landed another punch, this time a brutal uppercut. Initially planning to use Chewbacca as bait to lure Han out of hiding so that he could collect that larger bounty, this punch knocked some sense into him. This Wookiee was too dangerous. Dengar would kill him, here and now. He stood over Chewie and raised his plasma knife for a final strike. In a growling voice, he demanded one thing from the Wookiee before taking his life. Just tell me one thing and I'll put you out of your filthy, stinking misery. Where is Han Solo? Then something miraculous happened. A blaster shot landed right between Dengar's shoulder blades and put him down. Looks like the bounty hunter had his answer. Solo had arrived. Right here, ugly, the smuggler said, somehow managing to sound heroic and condescending at the same time. Although it was a clean shot from Solo's famous DL-44 blaster, Dengar's armor managed to absorb most of it. The bounty hunter rose from the ground, his back billowing a plume of smoke where Solo's shot had hit. He reignited the plasma blade again. Dengar stared down Solo's blaster. We'll never know what would have happened. Maybe Han would have landed a killing shot, or perhaps Dengar would have used the boxes and ventilation pipes on the roof as cover, quickly closing the ground between Solo and himself, and plunged that plasma knife into the rebel. But before either man had a chance to act, Chewie rose from the ground, still badly wounded from the thermal detonator explosion and his plasma knife wounds. He grabbed Dengar. Lifting the bounty hunter above his head, Chewie launched him clear off the roof and into the city below. The fight was over and Chewie got a swift reminder that his Wookiee strength would only get him so far. Chewie was nearly killed, and he would have been if Solo hadn't arrived to save the day. Even though he was a hero of the Rebellion and a fierce warrior, Chewie wasn't the most ruthless fighter in the galaxy. Against bounty hunters and less honorable foes, he could be bested. That was a lesson he would have to learn the hard way a few times over. There were people in this galaxy that didn't deserve mercy or honor during a fight. You killed them quick when you got the chance, or else they'd do the same to you.